welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ समासस नेमली द अव्ययी भाव bahuvrihi and dvandva currently we are focused on avyayi bhav samasa which is an extremely important type of samasa in sanskrit the features of the avyayi bhav samasa can be explained with the help of a, a simple equation mentioned on this slide where x and y are mentioned as independent entities separate entities independent in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent x has an independent meaning x has an independent word form and x has an independent accent so also y the plus sign shown in between x and y indicates that they are semantically related now given this fact the speaker of sanskrit wishes to merge x and y independent entities together and generate an output in the form of x y which is one unit so x y has got one word form as well as one meaning as well as one accent now philosophically it is argued that x y is different something additional more than x and y alone however on the other hand we can also assign the correlation between the constituents in the output generated so we can say that in x y as one unit x acts as the head this is an avyayi bhav samasa which is the output and in that x acts as the head that is the reason why x is shown in bold characters now in the avyayi bhav samasa x invariably barring a few exceptions is an avyaya y is never an avyaya barring a few exceptions now together x y they are not avyaya they cannot be called as an avyaya but when the compound process happens and xy as an output is generated this output is termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha so x which is an avyaya and xy is also an avyaya so x shapes the formal feature of xy that highlights the fact that x is the head anavyayam avyayam bhavati semantically also if xy is to be related to any other meaning in the sentence meaning it has to be through x and can never be through y so these are the features of the avyayi bhav samasa the features are some of them quite general like aikarthya aikapadya and aikasvarya these are applicable to all the samasas but purva padartha pradhanya and purva pada pradhanya these are the features of the avyayi bhav samasa 
in the ashtadhyayi the core text of the paninian grammatical tradition avyayi bhava samasa is treated at different places for example the samasa vidhayaka sutras the sutras prescribing the samasa or sutras prescribing the conditions in which the process of compounding can take place as far as avyayi bhava is concerned these sutras are stated in 2.1 to be precise from 2.1.5 onwards up to 2.1.21 anya padarthe ch saudnyayam by the way 2.1.22 is tatpurushaha and from 2.1.22 onwards the tatpurusha samasa is delineated in the ashtadhyayi and all these sutras we have studied in the first course on samasa which was completely devoted to the study of the tatpurusha samasa in the ashtadhyayi and the paninian grammatical tradition so we can say that this small section of sutras from 215 onwards up to 221 is a section where you will find any sutra prescribing the avyay bhava samasa one of the biggest sutras laying down so many semantic conditions to be the input of the avyay bhava samasa was 216 which said avyayam vibhakti samipa samruddhi vridhyartha bhavat kaya samprati shabda pradurbhava paschad yathanupurvya yogabadhya sadrishya sampatti sakalyanta vachaneshu after that we come to the samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras and for avyayi bhava samasa these sutras are stated from 54107 up to 54112 these are the sutras which state the which prescribe the suffix to be added at the end of the samasa and finally there are swara vidhayaka sutras sutras prescribing the accent in 6.2 for avyay bhava samasa it is 6.2.121 etc this is how avyay bhava samasa is treated in the text of the ashtadhyayi it is important that we somehow remember these numbers which are very crucial right now we are focusing also on the samasanta pratyaya because we have already studied the samasa pratyay samasa vidhayaka sutras from 215 onwards up to 2121 and we are studying the samasanta pratyayas now we have already studied the very first sutra namely avyayi bhave sharat pravrti bhyah in the previous lecture now let us proceed further and study the subsequent sutras this is 5.4.108 anascha the sutra is anascha now there are two padas in the sutra the first one is anaha this is the panchami ekavachana of an and ch ch means and words continued are touch the pratyaya touch in which t and ch both are anubandhas both are markers and they are deleted by the selopaha so the pratyaya remains is a touch is prescribed by the sutra 5491 rajah sakibhya touch from that sutra touch is continued samasantah is the word in the sutra 5468 and that is continued pratyayah this is 3 this is 3.1.1 and from that sutra the word pratyayah is continued and also avyayi bhave 7/1 saptami ekavachana which means in the avyayi bhava samasa this word continues from 54107 namely avyayi bhave sharat pravrti bhyah which we have already studied all these put together the meaning of this sutra 54108 is as follows in the avyayi bhava samasa immediately after the words ending in an the samasanta suffix touch is added i repeat in the avyayi bhava samasa avyayi bhave immediately after the words ending in an anaha the samasanta suffix touch touch pratyayah samasantaha is added 
Now here an is a mention of just two sounds a uh, and n following and it does not imply any load of meaning that is carried by these two sounds together. An is a mention of the anarthaka an. So for example in Rajan which ends in an, an does not have any meaning. So now let us take the example. When the meaning to be conveyed is near the king and we have Rajnaha Samipam as the Laukika Vigraha. Rajnaha Samipam. Now we have the Samasa being stated by the Sutra Avyayam Vibhakti Samipa. And then because the word Avyayam is mentioned in that Sutra in Prathama, Upa which is an Avyaya here, which denotes the sense of Samipa, is placed in the initial position of the Samasa. So we have Upa plus Su plus Rajan plus Ngas as the Alaukika Vigraha. Now at this stage we get the Samasa Saudhnya by Avyayam Vibhakti etc. After which we get the Pratipadika Saudhnya and then before we apply the deletion of the soups, we also add the Samasanta suffix touch prescribed by this particular Sutra 54108. Because the word Rajan ends in An, so we add the suffix touch here. So we have Upa plus Su plus Rajan plus Nasu plus touch. Now we apply 2471 Supo and we delete both the soups. So we have Upa plus 0 plus Rajan plus 0 and plus A. Now at this stage we apply 64144 Nastadhite So we have An which is part of Rajan deleted by this particular Sutra. So we have Upa plus 0 plus Raj plus 0 plus A. And when we join it together we get Upa Raja. Upa Raja as the finally derived compound output meaning near the king. Now when we use this samasa in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it. So we have uparaja plus su. And then because uparaja is an avyayi bhava samasa, it is termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha. And so Avyayadapsupaha would apply and delete su in normal circumstances but because of the exception sutra saying that an Avyayabhava Samasa ending in short a after this when su is added is not deleted rather it is substituted by am. So we have Uparaja plus su substituted as Uparaja plus am and then we apply the Sandhi rule and we get Uparajam. Let us take another example. When the meaning to be conveyed is in the soul, we have the Laukika Vigraha, Atmani. Atmani is the Saptami Ekavachana of Atman. Atman plus Ni. This is the Laukika Vigraha. Now, in the sense of the Vibhakti Ni, we place the Avyaya, that is Adhi. And that is why, because of the sutra avyayam, vibhakti, samipa, etc., the samasa is prescribed and the avyaya adhi denotes the sense of the vibhakti, ni, which is saptami, ekavachana. In other terms, adhi denotes the meaning adhikarana or adhara. So, atman being the adhara. So, adhi plus su plus atman plus ni, this is the Alaukika Vigraha to which because of this present Sutra Anascha 54108 we add the Samasanta suffix touch and we get then Adhi plus Su plus Atman plus Ni plus touch. Now the Samasanta suffix is added the Samasa Saudhnya is already there so Pratipadika Saudhnya also takes place and then we delete both the subs because of Supodhatup Pratipadika Yoho so we have Adhi plus 0 plus Atman plus 0 plus A and then we have 
adhi atman a and then we once again apply 64144 nastadhite nantasya bhasya te lopasyat and then we delete an from atman and then we have adhi plus atma plus a and we join this together by doing the necessary sandhi rule and we get the form adhyatma which means in the soul this is the finally derived compound output in the form of an avibhava samasa adhyatma since it is an avibhava samasa it is an avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha now when we want to use it in the sentence we add the suffix su after it but after an avyaya when su is added it gets deleted on account of the sutra avyayadap sapaha but the exception sutra says navyayi bhavat atomtva panchamya which means if an avyayi bhav samasa ends in short a such a su is not deleted rather it is substituted by am and so we have adhyatma plus su getting substituted by adhyatma plus am and then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the finally derived form adhyatmam we can use it in the sentence like this chaitanyam adhyatmam vartate animatedness or consciousness rests in the soul after having studied the sutra anascha let us proceed further so sutra 54107 avye bhave sharat prabhritibhya and anascha they both stated the samasanta pratyaya touch always wherever they stated from now on we have the sutras where the touch suffix is stated optionally which means that we will be able to derive from the sutras two forms one with touch and one without the suffix touch let us study them one by one first we have napum sakat anyatarasyam there are two padas in the sutra napum sakat and anyatarasyam napum sakat is 5/1 panchami ekavachana after the of the word napum saka which means after the word denoting neuter gender anyatarasyam means optionally words continued are touch prathama ekavachana from 5491 raja hasaki bhyas touch समासांताह प्रथम बहुवचन फ्रॉम द सूत्र समासांताह 5468 अनह पंचमी एकवचन फ्रॉम 5408 अनश्च प्रत्ययः प्रथम एकवचन फ्रॉम प्रत्ययः 3.1.1 एंड अव्ययी भावे सप्तमी एकवचन मीनिंग इन द अव्ययी भाव समास फ्रॉम 5407 अव्ययी भावे शरत प्रभृतिभ्यः all these put together the meaning of the sam- sutra is as follows in the avyayi bhava samasa immediately after the words ending in an and denoting the neuter gender the samasanta suffix touch is added optionally i repeat in the avyayi bhava samasa immediately after the words ending in an and denoting the neuter gender the samasanta suffix touch is added optionally i repeat in the avyayi bhava samasa avyayi bhave immediately after the words ending in an anaha and denoting the neuter gender napum sakat the samasanta suffix samasantah pratyayah touch touch is added optionally anyatarasyam let us look at the example now the meaning to be conveyed is near the skin so the laukika vigraha is charmanah samipam samipa is the sense that is denoted by an avyaya up and so now because of the sutra avyayam vibhakti samipa we have up plus su plus charman plus gnas as the alaukika vigraha which gets the samasa saudnya now here we note that the word charman is used which is in neuter and which ends in an charman denotes neuter gender and it ends in an so both the conditions mentioned in the sutra are fulfilled 
and now we add the suffix touch optionally. First let us see how the word the example gets derived by adding the suffix touch and then let us see what happens when we do not add the suffix touch. So first we have added touch. So upa plus su plus charman plus gas plus touch. Now after the samasa saudhnya, the pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then sopodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and so we delete both the sups. So we have upa plus zero plus charman plus zero plus touch and then we have upa plus, upa plus zero plus charman plus zero plus a and then we once again apply 6, 4, 144 and we delete the un part of charman. So we have upa plus zero plus charm plus zero plus a. And then when we join them together, we get the form upa charma, the finally derived avyay bhava compound output meaning near the skin, upa charma. Now when we use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it. Upacharma is an avyayi bhava samasa, so it is an avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha. Now because it is an avyaya, su will be deleted by the sutra avyayadapsupaha. But because of the exception sutra, now avyayi bhavad atomtvapanchamyaha, which says that when an avyayi bhava samasa ends in short a, Su added after it is not deleted, rather it gets substituted by am. So we have upacharma plus am, then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the form upacharmam. This is what we get after adding the samasanta pratyaya touch. When we don't add the samasanta pratyaya touch, what happens? Let's see. Optionally, charmanaha samipam is the same laukika vigraha. Alaukika Vigraha is also same, Upa plus Su plus Charman plus Ngasa, Samasa Saudhnya takes place, Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and then we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and we delete both the Sups. So we have Upa plus Zero plus Charman plus Zero. We join them together and we get Upa Charman as the finally derived Avyayi Bhava Samasa output Upa Charman ending in Na. And then we add the suffix su after it when we want to use it in the sentence. So we have upacharman plus su and now we apply the general rule avyayadap supaha which says that the su pratyaya added after an avyaya, in this case upacharman, is deleted. So we delete su and we have upacharman plus zero and then we have upacharman as the finally derived form in which Na gets deleted by the Sutra Nalopa Pratipadikantasya and so we have Upacharma as the finally derived sentence output, Upacharma. So when we add the Samasanta Pratyaya touch, we get the form Upacharmam. When we don't add the Samasanta Pratyaya touch, we get the form Upacharma. So Upacharmam or Upacharma Asthivartate, there is bone near the skin. If this is to be stated, you can say upacharmam upacharma asthivartate. This is how optional forms are derived and optional forms are accounted for in the Paninian grammar. Similarly, if you have the meaning to be conveyed is towards the action. So there is abhimukhya. So the laukika vigraha is karmanaha abhimukham and then we have the avyaya prati denoting the sense of abhimukha towards and since the word avyaya is mentioned in prathama in the sutra avyayam vibhakti etc. the avyaya prati occupies the initial position of the samasa. So now we get the alaukika vigraha namely prati plus su plus karman plus ngasa. And so we have the samasa saudhnya taking place after which we add the pratyaya touch because of this sutra 54109. 
So we have prati plus su plus karman plus nas plus tachi. Then we get the pratipadika saudhnya. Then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho. So we have prati plus zero plus karman plus zero plus tachi. That is prati plus zero plus karman plus zero plus a. And then we delete an in karman on account of six four one forty four. So we have prati plus zero plus karm plus zero plus a, and when we join them together, we get the form prati karma. Now, when we want to use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su to it. So prati karma plus su. Now, prati karma is an avyayi bhava samasa, so it is an avyaya. So by the normal sutra, avyaya dab sabha su would be deleted, but because of the exception sutra. Which is navyai bhavad atom pavancham yaha, which says that if an avyai bhava samasa ends in short a, then su is not deleted, rather it is substituted by am. So we have pratikarma plus su being substituted by pratikarma plus am. Then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the form pratikarmam. This is after we add the samasanta pratyaya a. After making the avyayi bhava samasa ending in a, optionally, when we don't add the samasanta suffix touch, then what happens? Then the same meaning towards the action is expressed by karmana abhimukham, which is the laukika vigraha. The alaukika vigraha is also same. Prati plus su plus karman plus gnas. Now we don't add the samasanta touch pratyaya. So we have prati plus su plus karman plus nas as it is. Then there is samasa saudnya. Then the pratyadika saudnya takes place, and then we apply supodhatu pratyadika yoho, which deletes both the sups. So now we have prati plus zero plus karman plus zero, and when we join the words together, we get prati karman as the finally derived avyay bhava samasa output. Prati karman. When we use it in the sentence. We add the suffix su to it, so we have pratikarman plus su. Now, because pratikarman is an avyayi bhava samasa, so it is an avyaya. So we apply the sutra avyaya dab supaha and delete su pratyaya. So we have pratikarman plus zero, and then we have only pratikarman. At the end of which comes na. We apply the sutra na lopa pratibadi gantasya. So this na gets deleted, and we get the form pratikarma. As the sentence output, so now we have pratikarmam or pratikarma pravritti hi udyogino bhavati. An industrious person proceeds towards action. Pratikarmam or pratikarma. These are the two optional forms available to us from five four one zero nine. To summarize. The nominal roots or pratipadikas having neuter gender occupying the position of the uttarpada of the avyabhava samasa have an optional behavior. They take the end of the compound suffix samasa anta pratyaya optionally, and therefore generate two optional forms, whereas others they generate only one samasa anta form. We study some more sutras which. Prescribe the samasanta pratyaya in the next lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.